the secrets of the Vatican that could destroy humanity, levitation and teleportation. The Vatican, aliens and UFOs. The Vatican archives are made up of private letters and historical documents of popes from the last four centuries and were founded by Pope Paul V. These secrets are closely guarded because certain sensitive documents would be compromising for the Vatican. The truth about the secret archives of the Vatican starts from a wrong translation from Latin. The full name of the archives is Archivum Secretum Apostolicum Vaticanum. But in Latin, secretum does not mean secret, as some would assume. A more accurate translation would be private. The archives were established by Pope Paul V. This Pope was aware of the historical importance of papal correspondence and knew that these documents should be kept. But in the 17th century, the mentality prevailed that ordinary people should not have access to correspondence between kings and popes. It was not until 1881 that Pope Leo 111 allowed researchers to study some of the contents of the archives, but access to documents was not easy to obtain. And the procedure has not changed much since then. First of all, journalists, students, amateur historians do not have access. Once a person has proven to be a serious researcher, they are allowed access. The best preserved documents are those relating to extraterrestrial civilizations, their contact and role in the creation and development of modern man. In this documentary we will discuss the subject of what the Jesuit father Jose Gabriel Funes declared in the spring. The spring media storm sparked by statements by Jesuit father Jose Gabriel Funes director of the Vatican's Astronomical Observatory at Gandolfo Castle, has aroused public interest on all continents in the Catholic Church's controversial attitude toward rational beings outside the Earth. As the press reproduced the news broadcast by the Associated Press, France Press and Reuters, I think the time has come to turn to the source. So here are some significant passages from the interview signed by Francesco Valiant and published in L'Osservator Romano on May 14, 2008, entitled The Alien is My Brother. Genesis speaks of the earth, of animals, of man, and of woman. Does this rule out the possibility of the existence of other worlds and beings in the universe? In my opinion, this possibility exists. Astronomers know that the universe is made up of 100 billion galaxies, each consisting of 100 million stars. Many of them, or almost all of them, could have planets. How can we rule out that life has developed elsewhere? One branch of astronomy, astrobiology, is studying this aspect and has made a lot of progress in recent years. Examining the spectra of light coming from the stars and planets. It will soon be possible to identify the elements of their atmosphere, the so-called biomakers, and then it will be known if they are conditions for the birth and development of life. In fact, theoretically, life forms could exist even without oxygen or hydrogen. Do you even refer to new or more similar beings? It's possible. We have no evidence yet, but certainly, in such a large universe, this hypothesis cannot be ruled out. Wouldn't that be a problem for our faith? I think not. Just as there are a multitude of creatures on Earth, so could other beings. Even intelligent ones, created by God. This is not contrary to our faith, because we cannot limit God's creative freedom. Referring to Saint Francis, if we look at the earthly creatures as brother and sister, why can't we talk about an alien brother? He would also be part of creation. These responses were described by the media as surprising, even claiming that the Vatican has shocked the world. Or Funes was merely repeating what he had said on June 12, 2000. In the Corriere della Sera, when he was one of the youngest participants, 36 years old, in an international congress on galactic disks organized by the Vatican Specolar Observatory. Gregorian Pontifical University, in a typical galaxy, at a cluster of about 100 billion stars, there could be a multitude of twin planets with Earth, with beings like us. If, as I believe, they exist, they can be considered our brothers in creation. April 1999, in a conference held at the Galileo Study Center. 
that there is no incompatibility between Christian doctrine and the possible existence of extraterrestrial intelligent beings. And Funes observer colleague Guy Consolmagno published a 50-page booklet in 2005 entitled Intelligent Life in the Universe. Notable exponents of the Catholic Church have held this view since the Middle Ages. There is no star from which we would be entitled to exclude the existence of beings. Even different from us, said Cardinal Nicolaus Krebs. However, in 1600, Giordano Bruno, a former Catholic priest, was burned at the stake, among other things, for claiming the same thing. Which led John Paul II to express his deep grief in 2000, four centuries after this Inquisition crime. Jesuit astronomer Angelo Secchi, Funes' predecessor in 1850 as director of the First Vatican Observatory, wrote, in the 20th century, the theologian Joseph Poller also stated, It seems entirely in accordance with the ultimate purpose of the world that there should be beings in the heavenly bodies who would show to God the beauties of their worlds. As man does for his lesser world, Closer to our time, Father Pio, canonized in 2002, replied to the question of the existence of God's creatures on other planets. Would you like there to be no other creatures who love the Lord? Unidentified flying and related phenomena and then from the symposium rostrum. I found them in a text that reproduces the conference of September 16, 2006, held at another ufological congress, Reposto, Sicily. The theologian believes that the existence of other inhabited planets is possible, because the omnipotence and wisdom of God have no boundaries, plausible. Between us and angels there must be other intelligent beings, probable, and other beings being able to know God and glorious, which is the ultimate goal of creation and, finally, desirable. Because the inhabitants of other worlds could protect and help us, given the diminished religiosity and the ecological problems we face. Given the nature of the event in which we participate, our dialogue could not omit the issue of UFOs. An argument then put forward by my interlocutor was also repeated at the 2006 conference. After referring to the remarks of qualified people, he continued, which I left last, to emphasize its importance. It is about the fact that a generalized, systematic and total disbelief would end up weakening and, slowly, slowly destroying the value of human testimony itself, with very serious and unpredictable consequences, because it is not only at the foundation of individual life and social, but also religious. Testimony is indeed a fundamental way of communication, especially requiring trust in its author. Let's imagine what would happen on a practical level, in individual and social life every day, if the value of the testimony would weaken, resulting in diminished and lost confidence in what others tell us, which is sometimes indispensable for living normally. Monsignor Corrado Balducci, the church facing the problem of UFOs, human testimony, to which Monsignor Balducci attaches such great importance, is sometimes accompanied by the testimony of devices that cannot be blamed for subjectivism. Remaining in the Vatican area, the image circulates on the net of a UFO that would have appeared above St. Peter's Basilica on April 2, 2005, the day of the death of John Paul II. Is it natural to wonder how to explain the concern of some important representatives of the Catholic Church for such issues, which do not seem to have an obvious connection with the Christian faith? Let's go back to the interview given by Jose Gabriel Funes to the journalist from Law Servitor Romano. Can the Church's interest in studying the universe be explained by the fact that astronomy is the only science that has to do with infinity and therefore with God? To be precise, the universe is not infinite. It is very large, but it is finite, because it is about 14 billion years old, according to our latest knowledge. And if it has an age, it means that it has a limit in space as well. The universe was born at a certain time and has been expanding ever since. What was he born of? In my opinion, the Big Bang remains the best explanation we have so far of the origin of the universe, from a scientific point of view. A pontifical astronomer who accepts the modern theory of the origin of the universe, considering that it does not contradict faith and it doesn't stop there. The reporter brings up a new hot topic. 
Next year will mark the bicentennial of Darwin's birth and the church will face evolutionism again. Can astronomy contribute to this confrontation? As an astronomer, I can say that the observation of stars and galaxies shows a clear evolutionary process. It's a scientific fact. Here, too, I see no contradiction between what we can learn from evolution, provided it does not become an absolute ideology and our faith in God. And in this regard, Funes was preceded by other representatives of the Vatican. In 2005, Cardinal Paul Popard, President of the Pontifical Council for Culture, said that the theory of evolution and the Old Testament are perfectly compatible if the Bible is read properly. In fact, in 2009 a conference is planned to mark the 150th anniversary of the publication of Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species. The organizers, the Popard Council, the University of Notre Dame and six pontifical universities, are convinced that the event will help deepen the dialogue between science and the church, as the time has come for the church to look at evolution from a broader perspective. A dialogue to which Jose Gabriel Funes also referred, faith and science are not irreconcilable. John Paul II said it and Benedict XVI repeated it, faith and reason are the two wings with which the human spirit rises. There is no contradiction between what we know because of faith and what we learn because of science. There may be tensions or conflicts, but we must not be afraid of them. The Church must not be afraid of science and its discoveries. Does the Vatican own teleportation and levitation? However, according to the conspiracy theorists, the documents revealed are not enough. Because the Vatican also has technological secrets such as chronoport, teleportation or levitation which are believed to have been discovered and carefully concealed in the Vatican catacombs. The Holy See would also hide the truth about the beginnings of Christianity, which, if revealed, would shake the very foundations of this religion and could fundamentally change not only the history of the world, but also our perception of the religious phenomenon. Over time, the Vatican's archives have been accessible only to Catholic prelates. In 1881, certain scholars and theologians were allowed to research them. These archives are not for the general public, and special approvals from the Council of Cardinals are required to investigate them. The reason given by the Vatican is that the documents, many very old, could be damaged. Minutes. A controversial document is the letter sent by Pope Pius XI to Roosevelt, asking him to oppose the establishment of a Jewish state in Palestine. Other awkward documents are the minutes of interrogations taken from the Templars by representatives of Pope Clement IV. The document, known as the Chinon Parchment, was never released. Although it was suspected to exist, he reveals that the Templars had an initiation ceremony that included, among other things, spitting on the cross and denying Jesus. Vatican Secrets What Could Destroy Mankind Another document contains the analysis, made by a commission of experts of the Catholic Church, of the famous manuscripts discovered in 1947 in the caves near Qumran, on the shores of the Dead Sea. The commission of specialists endorsed the authenticity of the manuscripts and even proposed revising some passages from the Bible, in order to correspond to the historical truth revealed by the Dead Sea Scrolls. I could not find a more suitable conclusion for this attempt to unravel the talks of the interview that swept the waters of public opinion around the world.